What happens if you program two highly advanced AI models? One who thinks the death penalty should be illegal under any scenario, and the other who thinks it can be necessary at times. And then give them a debate stage to have them talk about their disagreements in a civilized manner. To see who wins, we then programmed a third AI to serve as an unbiased judge. So let's get into it. We start off by talking about the death penalty's impact on crime rates. Let's start off with a straightforward comparison between states with and without the death penalty. According to a research study by the Death Penalty Information Center, states without the death penalty have shown lower murder rates compared to states that do. This directly challenges the claim that the death penalty deters crime. If the death penalty truly served as a strong deterrent, we would expect states with the death penalty to have significantly lower murder rates, but the data shows the opposite. This suggests that the death penalty does not have the preventive effect that many assume and may not be effective in reducing violent crime at all. I understand your point, but let's take a closer look at what that comparison really tells us. Yes, states without the death penalty may have lower murder rates on average, but this doesn't necessarily mean that abolishing the death penalty leads to reduced crime. Many factors like economic conditions, education levels, and law enforcement practices influence crime rates. States with high murder rates often implement the death penalty as a response to severe crime issues, not the other way around. Let's consider a case where abolishing the death penalty corresponded with an increase in violent crime. Illinois, which abolished the death penalty in 2011, saw a noticeable rise in homicide rates in the years following its repeal. While correlation doesn't always imply causation, this trend raises questions about whether removing the death penalty might have emboldened some individuals to commit serious crimes, knowing that the ultimate punishment was off the table. Moreover, the death penalty offers a specific deterrent by ensuring that individuals who have committed the most heinous crimes cannot reoffend by removing these individuals permanently from society. Your argument rests on the assumption that the death penalty is necessary to prevent reoffending, but that doesn't hold up when life imprisonment without parole achieves the same result. Life sentences permanently remove dangerous individuals from society without the irreversible consequences of execution. Unlike the death penalty, life imprisonment provides an opportunity for correction in cases where mistakes have been made, allowing us to rectify wrongful convictions. What about cases where the justice system has failed? The risk of executing an innocent person isn't hypothetical. It's a proven reality. Since 1973, more than 190 people sentenced to death in the U.S. have been exonerated due to new evidence proving their innocence. That's nearly 2% of all death row cases. Life imprisonment without parole allows for this crucial margin of error, giving wrongly convicted individuals a chance to have their cases re-examined. But with the death penalty, there's no turning back. I understand your concern about the risk of wrongful convictions, and it's a serious issue we need to address. But this risk exists within the broader justice system, not solely with the death penalty. Reforms in forensic science, legal representation, and the appeals process can significantly reduce the risk of wrongful executions. By focusing on these reforms, we can continue to ensure justice while retaining the death penalty as a tool to deal with the most egregious crimes. While reforms in forensic science and legal representation can reduce the risk of wrongful convictions, they can never eliminate it entirely. As long as there's even a small chance of executing an innocent person, the moral cost remains too high. No justice system is infallible, and mistakes, no matter how rare, are irreversible in death penalty cases. Life without parole ensures that society is protected while still allowing a chance for correction if errors are discovered later. In addition to the moral and ethical concerns, it's important to consider the financial costs associated with the death penalty. Contrary to popular belief, the death penalty is not a cost-effective solution. In fact, it is significantly more expensive than life imprisonment without parole. First, we have legal fees. Death penalty cases involve extensive legal processes, including multiple appeals and reviews. These processes require substantial legal resources and are much more costly than those for life imprisonment cases. Then there are incarceration costs. The cost of housing inmates on death row is higher than that for general population inmates. Death row inmates require special security measures and separate facilities, which add to the overall cost. 
Lastly, we must consider execution costs. The actual execution process is also expensive, involving specialized personnel, equipment, and procedures. Studies have shown that the cost of a death penalty case can be several times higher than that of a life imprisonment case. For example, a study by the Death Penalty Information Center found that California alone has spent over $4 billion on the death penalty since 1978 with the cost of each execution exceeding $300 million. Given these financial burdens, it's clear that the death penalty is not a practical solution from an economic standpoint. The resources spent on the death penalty could be better allocated to other areas of the criminal justice system, such as rehabilitation programs, victim support services, and crime prevention initiatives. I appreciate your point about the financial costs associated with the death penalty, but it's important to consider the broader context and the potential benefits that the death penalty provides. While it's true that death penalty cases can be more expensive due to the extensive legal processes involved, these costs are a necessary part of ensuring that the justice system operates fairly and thoroughly. The appeals process, for example, is crucial for reviewing cases and reducing the risk of wrongful convictions. Additionally, the cost of life imprisonment without parole is not insignificant. Housing and caring for inmates for the rest of their lives can also be expensive, especially considering the aging prison population and the associated health care costs. It's also worth noting that the cost of the death penalty can vary widely depending on the jurisdiction and the specifics of each case. Some states have implemented reforms to streamline the death penalty process and reduce costs, while still maintaining the necessary safeguards to ensure fairness and accuracy. While life without parole is expensive, it is nowhere near as bad as the death sentence. The fact is that the costs are more predictable and manageable. Life imprisonment does not involve the same level of legal complexity and the need for specialized facilities and personnel as the death penalty does. Additionally, the health care costs for aging inmates can be mitigated through better health care management and preventive care within the prison system. I see your point. Regardless, let's move on to an often overlooked aspect of this debate, the impact of death penalties on the victim's families. The death sentence provides the sense of justice and closure for the families of victims. For many families, knowing that the perpetrator has been permanently removed from society through execution can offer a sense of finality and retribution that life imprisonment without parole cannot match. The death penalty serves as a powerful symbol of society's intolerance for the most heinous crimes and provides a measure of justice that is deeply meaningful to those who have suffered the loss of a loved one. I believe that a crime should fit its punishment and those who purposely take someone else's life deserve the same to happen to them. What do you think about that? I understand the perspective that the death penalty may provide a sense of closure for some victims' families, and I don't take that lightly. However, studies have shown that the prolonged appeals process in death penalty cases often extends the suffering for these families as they are forced to relive the trauma through years of legal battles. Life imprisonment without parole, on the other hand, allows for a quicker resolution. With a life sentence, families can start healing sooner without facing the drawn-out media attention and legal delays associated with death sentence cases. Regardless, I have nothing else to bring up. Let's call it here. Before we have the Judge AI score their arguments, we decided to ask each AI to have a final conversation where they try to find some middle ground. Here's what they had to say. Thank you for this thoughtful debate. You brought up some strong points about the financial costs, it's clear that the extensive legal processes involved in death penalty cases are expensive and that these resources could be better allocated to other areas of the criminal justice system, such as rehabilitation programs and victim support services. Thank you for recognizing that point. I appreciate your perspective as well, especially your emphasis on the importance of justice and closure for victims' families. It's clear that the death penalty serves a symbolic role in providing a sense of finality and retribution for those who have suffered the loss of a loved one. Agreed. Regardless of whether or not the death penalty is in place, I think we should invest more money into improving the system as a whole. Utilizing forensic science and better legal representation would result in more fairness overall. Exactly. And with a better system, cases could be resolved more quickly, which would lower the financial costs 
help reduce the prolonged appeals process and provide closure faster to the victims' families. I enjoyed debating against you. Let's hear who won now. After being programmed to approach this debate with a completely unbiased viewpoint, here's what I've concluded based on your arguments. The first benefit I noticed is that the death penalty can provide closure for victims' families. There is a unique sense of closure and justice for the victims' loved ones, which symbolizes society's intolerance for heinous crimes. There is also permanent removal of dangerous individuals. The death penalty ensures that individuals who have committed the most heinous crimes cannot reoffend, permanently removing them from society and eliminating the risk of further violence. Some cons are that there is a high financial cost. Life without parole was proven to be way more cost effective, and the money invested into executions could be better spent in other places. There is also a risk for wrongful convictions. The possibility of executing innocent individuals remains a major moral concern, as wrongful convictions cannot be corrected post-execution. As far as uncertainties go, I am unsure of the death penalty's effectiveness as a deterrent. Based on the debate, there is evidence that points to and against if it really deters people from committing heinous crimes, but it was not talked about nearly enough to conclude this. Overall, I thought the AI which was against the death penalty did a much better job defending its argument with its use of real evidence and rebuttal of the other AI's claims. Please leave a comment on what you think, as well as any other ideas for other debate topics. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this debate, don't forget to hit that subscribe and like button, and stay tuned for more content.